Welcome to our Monday Thursday service of the First Congregational Church of Portland, Connecticut. Please be sure to listen to the music Kasha has uploaded this evening. I'm Jane Hawkin, the pastor, and as you may have surmised, we usually hold this service in our church sanctuary on the Thursday evening before Easter. The first part traditionally begins with a remembrance of Jesus' Last Supper with his disciples and includes the sacrament of communion. And the second part of the service, known as Tenebrae, tells the story of Jesus' betrayal and crucifixion. I want to begin by sharing with you this piece of artwork that my husband gave me as an ordination gift some 35 years ago. And it's rather heavy, it hangs on the wall, and it's some sort of ceramic on wood with a little bit of metal. And it depicts Jesus and his 12 disciples at the Last Supper. It's kind of simple and rustic, yet it's very beautiful and evocative. You might say it's different. Tonight we are doing something different as we record this service from our homes. Several of our deacons will be offering readings that tell the timeless, meaningful, and powerful story of Jesus' last days on this it strikes me that even though we can't be physically together, we can be spiritually united in Jesus Christ. We remember how at the Last Supper in the upper room, Jesus took the unleavened bread and blessed and broke it, saying, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this as often as you eat of it, in remembrance of me. And later he took the cup and he blessed it. And Jesus said, drink this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. By this bread and by this cup, we proclaim Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for the sacrament of communion and for the deep love of Jesus. Be with us as we hear the passion story Remind us that Jesus is with us in our joys as well as in our sorrows and in all the difficulties we are facing. Bring your healing, bring your hope, deepen our faith, deepen our love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The Shadow of Betrayal when it was evening, he took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. The Shadow of Desertion Then Jesus said to them, You all will become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the cock crows, 
you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. The Agony of the Soul. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down, and prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet, not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. The Unshared Vigil They went to a place called Gethsemane and said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James, and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough! The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. The Prayer of Jesus. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. The Arrest in the Garden After Jesus has spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees, and they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, Whom are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. Jesus sentenced to death. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was perverting the people, and here I have examined him in your presence, and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flog and release him. Then they all shouted together, Away with this fellow, release Barabbas for us. This was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that has taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again, but they kept shouting, crucify him, crucify him. A third time he said to them, why, what evil has he done? 
I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. He released the man they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder, and he handed Jesus over as they were. The Crucifixion. And when they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God? since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near, he said to his mother, woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. We light this candle as a sign that Jesus Christ the light of the world comes alive on Easter morning. And now in faith and hope, let us say together the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever, amen. The Latin word tenebrae means shadows or darkness. In our lives, in this very difficult time, there is much darkness, but there is also much light breaking in through compassionate deeds, through courageous acts. There is much light breaking in and love being shared. Let us follow Jesus through the next days and let us always obey his command to love one another. May God, creator Christ and Holy Spirit bless you and be with you always. Amen.